Right. Hello. Okay. So, who? How's everyone getting on with battleships? First of all, how's everyone getting on with battleships? Thank you. Just fine getting on. Uh, are you getting on with battleships? Oh yeah, progressive, perfect. Okay. Uh, has anyone finished battleships? <laughs> um, so I, I, I saw. I'm try, I've, I've tried to mimic some code where a few people were yesterday. Don't worry if you weren't here, but I'll, I'll sort of talk through what I've built so far. I've started building a board class. Uh, the purpose of this is to show how some of you, and I've corrected some of your code, uh, were breaking um, dependency injection, or, or you're breaking sort of your dependencies being in the class. Um, can everyone see? How far can we get to? Okay, thanks, Roy. Oh, you set that up quite nicely for me. Uh, so I've got this test here for board. Uh, it's not the best test in the world. Um, I'll probably change a few things here uh, because I'm doing a dot and a dot again. But in, in short, uh, my board class is uh, describing a board, uh, making a board new, um, checking that it has a grid of 100 and expecting that board to have a grid of 100. And I'll run the test to prove that it's, it's working. That's quite small. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the board has a grid of 100. Um, <coughs> the way it's doing it, I've I, I actually, um, I'm not, I'm just, this, I could have just put in um, a 100 array here or anything here, uh, but my grid, I'm creating it from scratch, so I might want to test that properly uh, to make sure that it's a hj 1 to 10 and it's a hash. I'll show you what that looks like just by doing Boards, uh, grid. Um, it kind of looks like a hash, A1 with a cell, A2 with a cell, A3 with a cell, and I, I can access any any moment, any parts of my grid here. Is everyone okay with kind of what I've done here? Um, Roy? I think on the boards.rb file, the projector's cutting off after the equal sign, so it's hard to see what you can do. That's why I'm cut off as well. So we've got this. We've got this here. So I'll, I'll talk through this method here, uh, but it's not particularly good. I'll just talk through it. Um, so I'm, I'm creating a, a hash called grid. I'm creating a range from A to J. I'm going through each of those and I'm assigning it letter. Then I'm going through numbers 1 to 10. I'm going through each of those and I'm calling it number. So inside here, I have a letter and a number. So in the grid, I'm making a hash um, key of letter plus grid. I have to turn the number to a string because it's a, it's a number and I, I can't add those two together. So now I've got A plus 1 for the first iteration, so that's giving me A1 as a string. And I'm converting that to a symbol because uh, well, I like symbols. And I'm um, giving a value of that a brand new cell. So I'm using cell.new here. Uh, just to clarify what a cell is, a cell is just a, um, a, a, an object which can have content either set to it or read from it. So there's an attribute access there. And I've just got a test here that I can set the content equal to a double of a ship, and I can read that back. I might want to enhance that later on. But right now, that's what it is in all its glory. Does everyone have something that looks a little bit like this? Whether or not you don't have the um, A to J, 1 to 10, uh, if you've got maybe an array or something on those lines, do you have a board of a grid? And is everyone putting some sort of cell or ship or water or something inside there? Something don't need. You're not? It's fine if not. Um, we don't get objects in there. Okay. We, we either hold, uh, at the beginning when we create a grid, we're assigning that to just be a symbol uh, water. A symbol water. Okay. Um, so initially, so yeah, it, it's going to be water. Um, I've gone down the cell approach, so it's going to be part of a cell, and then in that cell, it could either be water or, or it could be um, a, sh a ship or something on the lines, or I can place a ship later on. Uh, it's just so I've got a cell. Um, but is anyone doing something like this? Sort of cell.new or ship.new or water.new or anything.new? Yes, that's where I want to go. So a few people had this yesterday, and a few people have told independently, this is really bad. Um, this is uh, dependency. So now this uh, class board is dependent on this file, a uh, cell, and more importantly, this, this object cell. So if this cell breaks, um, my board's going to start breaking for no reason, and dependencies are generally bad. Uh, so we try to put our dependencies in when, when needed. Uh, How about the game class being dependent on, say, I mean, because it's kind of a super class, if you're creating ships, you're mm -hmm. 
there can be a thing, new shit within the game class when you're kind of initializing the game setup. Yeah. Are you allowed to do that, or is that kind of... You don't need to. Um, so, so later, maybe tomorrow or, or um, later on today, I'll show you a way to build that. So right now we start from the board and how to get this out of the board, and then another time we'll probably tell you how to get rid of that from from game, or it's not 100% needed. Um, another reason why this is bad. Remember yesterday when I said single responsibility? Uh, you should only have one reason to change. So if for whatever reason uh, we, we want to have a different kind of cell, like I want to have water or something, uh, the fact that I, I want cell to change or I want that um, content of, of there to change means I actually have to go into my board to change that. So I, I, because I'm changing my cell, I have to go into, um, I want to use a different kind of cell, I have to go into my board to make a change to cell. Um, that's not good. You don't want to have a, a reason for changing cell for, to go into board. It's, it's not the right way to be coding. So I'm breaking single responsibility and dependency um, injection here, or dependency inversion is the principle. So I kind of want to invert that dependency and, and make something else uh, put that cell inside there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, require, I don't know if this will work actually, require cell. I might get rid of that from there and build my board um, with cell.new. I'm going to handle that on my initializer. Um, I'm doing this in stages, so this isn't 100% what I want it to be. I'm going to point out why there's some problems here. And run this <coughs> okay, so that's, it's still working, it's still passing. Um, can anyone see um, the intentional error here initially? Yeah? Instead of creating the object within another class, you would just pass it into it, and then all the cells are the same. Exactly, so, so that's a problem straight away. Um, I'm passing in cell.new, um, so I'm, I'm injecting in so, sort of correctly. Uh, but uh, um, the cell on this side is the same cell, so I'm creating a hundred of the exact same object over and over again. So what I could do, I could remove um, the dot new and just pass in the cell class, and on this side, just do lowercase cell dot new. So now if I run that, uh, we'll see that they are all um, different objects. Um, trust me on that one, they, I wouldn't want to go through with them but they are all different objects. Um, just look at two of them to, to believe that. Um, uh, this is an object. Oh, it's not, not the object ID. That's just an allocation. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that number is. It's just a unique number for, for that object. I know you can get the object ID, which will look different to this. Um, do you know if that's memory location going to? I don't know, actually. It's yeah. I, yeah, I, I see it as a way to prove that they, they, they're unique objects. I don't know if it's memory allocation. Uh, no, certainly. Yeah, because you've got the object ID. So if you want to see the object ID, we can just do object underscore ID. Um, but it's a way to sort of determine that they're not the same object. It's an object sort of hash in that respect. So and now I'm passing in the cell. Uh, is, this, is this better? Oh, it's definitely better. This is good. So right now, I'm. Um, yes, now I can pass in different objects. It doesn't have to be a cell. Here, it had to be a cell. So for whatever reason, if I want to change the cell object, when I'm creating the board, I can just inject something else in there, uh, as and when on creation, that is. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so this is okay. Whereas I don't really want to create, um, I would say anything dot new or really any other objects inside here to contamin contaminate my testing environment. I don't like that. So this is going to be slightly advanced. If you do this, I'll be sort of okay with that. Um, so you're creating your cell with the um, objects being injected in. You're okay in that respect, but I'm not too happy with passing in a cell. I like doubles, as you know, and I don't think a lot of you like doubles, but we know I really like doubles. So if I wanted to do this in a double way. I would say uh, let um, cell equal uh, double cell. And I'm going to pass in. I like to have the order of this correct, but it shouldn't make any difference actually. Um, it's just for my own clarification when I read down. So now I'm going to pass in that cell. Uh, can anyone anticipate any problem that I'm going to have here? 
yeah, I want to call dot new on this double. So let's have a look at that. Exactly. So cell received unexpected message new. Um, so if this is going to be the cell that I want to sort of like have things on, so dot content and everything else, I can have um, if I wanted to content um, water. What is this cell? In, in my double land, in my, in my mind. It, it's an instance of a cell. So really I want to make a, a, a double or something that I can call dot new on. So I want to create a, a new double, but this one's going to be called the cell class. And I'm going to create a double of cell class. And there's going to be a method on that called new. You can see it's slightly different things. New is a reserve word, and that's going to return. What, when, when we call dot new on a cell class, what do we get back? An instance of a cell, which is going to be this double here. So when we call new on this, it's going to return uh, this cell here. So I'll probably change the order of that. Again, it makes no difference to change the order. It's just my own um, neatness. Uh, well, this is kind of a fake cell class. When you're creating doubles, you are creating a fake class. I could, but I don't need to. Uh, this is uh, this. This is everything that I need. Um, so I've, I've created a cell class. So now, when I pass in here, I'm passing a cell, a double of a cell class. When I go here. I want to call dot new on that, which is going to return a cell. So now. Bring R spec. We've got a whole bunch of different cells. Actually, we do have the same problem, sort of again, but it's more controlled. I know everything's correct, um, but each one's returning the same cell double each time. But I'm okay with that for now. Um, sorry? Uh, it's better now that my, my test is completely clean and sterile. I've only got a board in here, calling board.new. I haven't got anything to do with a cell. And my board. Uh, is better because I'm not instantiating any objects inside there. But I'm, not instant I'm, not, I'm not requiring any classes. It's not dependent on anything. It's just whatever we pass in, it's going to create a new one of those um, as and when we need to. Why is a test better if you don't apply it by understanding? Exactly. Um, every uh, point I made last week of um, can anyone name some reasons why it's better to not have um, other classes polluting your, your tests? Sorry? Uh, if you to prove it, uh, yeah. Wait, I think if it's, it's a larger, if it's a larger program and somebody else is working on the other class and they change it, it's going to break your test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so right now, I don't even need to have this cell class. I can just delete these cell classes because someone else is working on them and they haven't committed them yet. I can proceed as normal. Uh, so I can carry on coding. I don't have to have mm -hmm. this cell class. So that's another reason. Um, if I were to break something in cell or someone was to break something in cell, um, my board and my cell test won't break, just my cell test will break, so I can identify that quicker uh, rather than having everything breaking. Um, there's, there's so many more benefits of having it this way. So um, so I've got my board, which I'm passing in uh, what I want to be populated there. Um, I don't really like um, this. This isn't a dependency uh, problem here, but I don't like the idea of having uh, J and 10, because most of you guys are working with a 4, a full grid cell rather than 100. Um, so really I want to sort of, I, I want to say how big I want the cell to be. Um, so how big is, this This is going to be up to 10, so we've got this number 10 in here. I know I'm gonna, I, I want it to be starting with A and I want it to um, have the A1, A2, A3. I like that form. Uh, but I might want to pass in uh, the size. Um, so how, how am I going to pass in the size? I can pass it in as, as option. So, um, Size uh, ten. <coughs> and uh, content is going to be a cell class. So the size of my board is going to have ten and the content is going to be a cell class. So here I'm not just passing in a cell, I'm passing in a hash. So this hash is going to be uh, my only my options or my configuration. And um, inside here I'm going to have options, um, cell, uh, 
uh, oh, options content and I've got my size is going to be equal to my options size. So this is now going to be 10. So I can just pass in size here. Everything should hopefully work. Oh, what's it on? Tell class received. I have got that. I'm going to fix that in just a second. I think that'll take a little uh, longer to fix. Um, so options. I need to get rid of. Just double cell received. Unexpected message. Um, I shouldn't be calling that on cell. That's why I'm a little bit confused. So options. I haven't saved this slide. That's why. Yeah, everything's fine. So yes, I need to sort of change this. So I need to make um, 10 into J. Um, can anyone think of a, a nice way of turning 10 into J? It's not really a nice way, unfortunately. Yeah, you can use board. Um, what is uh, 10 uh, and J? How can you turn 10 into J? Starts at 97. So if we were to do 10 plus 97 char, let's, let's look at that in IRB. <laughs> 10 plus 97, sorry? Um, you're right, yeah. 10 plus 97, char, it's K. Mm. Is it 96, then? You don't want to send that, but yeah, you're right, that's in lowercase. We want it to be in uppercase. Do we call upper on that? Or? Uh, we'll probably just do 65, simple again, uh, 64, uh, that's where the lowercase one is. So we'll just do 64, so whatever number is in. Uh, this is just a little tweak here, but it makes our cell... Um, I'm not 100% happy with all of this big bulk and all this like, logic that's going in here. I would want to refax these out maybe into methods. So we've got size plus 64. Um, and then that's going to be rounded off again. It's starting to look like some other programming language now. It's not looking like Ruby anymore. Aspect, but everything's working, and we've still got our J10 and our A, A1. Um, it's a bit better. Um, I, I won't try to refactor it now. I'll leave it up to you. But right now, when we initialize a board, uh, we're initializing it uh, with the options of how big we want it to be. Uh, we're passing in the content of every, what everything's going to be uh, created and the, um, the size. So right now I can make a size of 2. Um, so if I make a size of 2, everything will be a lot smaller. And more importantly, of course, my test will change. And I'll probably have to change that. It's a lot smaller. Or if I make it free, this board will now be fit for tic-tac-toe. So I can make a grid of um, a free. And that'll be a tic-tac-toe grid, or I can make a board of, of ten, and it'll be good for snakes and ladders. Or um, yes. exactly. So this is a good way to. Um, so I might want to extract this out into an internal method, so it's not just on initialization. I can change it, say midway through, um, if I wanted to have I don't know, the ability to make the game harder, or if, if you were playing or something along those lines. Um, so right now I've got the options to, to change it, should I need to. Um, I would always say if you're building, um, only because you're starting with the smallest possible step, you're building a grid of four, so you don't want to have to test up to um, up, up to 100 cells, it's a little bit harder. Um, so this is working in both cases. We know it's going to be extendable up to 100, but it will also work on a grid of four. Uh, but generally you have to code for your exact problem there and then, and then do this afterwards. Uh, just, just to sort of um, get a feel for what it is that you're building. Um, so what else? Um, I've noticed a few of you have been sort of placing ships quite trickily. Um, who said problems placing ships? Who had problems placing ships? Who's had problems? Who, who's tried placing a ship of more than one, of more than the size of one? Uh, have you been okay with that so far? 
if you go for this approach of doubles, it gets a lot harder. So I think that might be why you're having trouble. Is that why you're having trouble? Uh, so there's one. Our issue is we can't figure out how to change the cell.new and access the cell.new. The cell.new. So you're trying to create a cell with content. So right now, my cell has content of water. So our cell has a content of water. I see. OK, and you're trying to make it a ship. OK. Um, I might be able to sort of show you how to do that. So you, cause, yeah, because it's just a double. You're going to have trouble maybe placing things on there. So um, who's placing horizontally and vertically? Uh, are you using an array or are you using a hash? Right. Oh, OK, it's a bit easier with an array. Uh, but with a hash, you have to kind of build it another way. So it can place a chip. Um, just as a show of hands, and you might be intimidated to do so, um, anywhere in your class, is anyone doing this? Has anyone got this anywhere in their board class? I know some of you have, and I've seen it, so I'll be naming and shaming. OK, so you, this is exactly the same principle. You should not be. Um, creating ship.new on your boards. So you should be doing that right now in your tests and then passing it into, if you want it to be on your board, you pass it onto your board by your tests. Um, Junior had a fantastic question earlier on where he said, eventually, like, these things are going to have to be created and, and where are they going to be created and put on the, on the board. Um, so there is going to be something which is creating board.new, ship.new, game.new. You know, don't fuck around with me, Steve, I think you said. <laughs> um, I, I know it's going to happen. Um, and you, you really don't have to. Um, so in my board, I'm going to be creating... So in IRB, we can create everything. In our tests, we can create everything. Um, when we're dealing with websites and servers, then we can create the things that we need to, need to create there and then. Um, deal with that in your, in your controllers for now. And we're worrying about that next week. Right now, I just want you to build it in test world and give yourself the ability to create it in the IRB. So you have to create each new ship place each ship individually, uh, create your player, add a board to a player, and add ships to boards, and then you should be able to play. Don't worry about automating it inside classes. If you, if you can't do it in IRB and you find it hard, then there's a problem. If you can't test it using doubles and this way, then there's definitely a problem. So if you stick to the rules of not building in your tests uh, new instances or anything um, other than what you're testing, and on this side, if you stick to not building anything new, and you're passing everything in, um, either in initialization or adding things in there. So right now I'm about to add a ship onto the board. If you stick to that, you're going to write much better code than if you didn't stick to that. That's going to be extended. No. Um, the perfect method, uh, so the perfect method has zero arguments. That is the best way to write any method. The second best has one, followed closely by two, uh, then by three, never four. Um, I would actually say never three, uh, but you should absolutely never have four arguments. So if you're ever passing four arguments, you're doing it wrong. It's, it's got too, too much information. Uh, you need to separate uh, things up a little bit. Um, three, under very, very special circumstances, is acceptable. Um, two is, is, is OK and one is OK. So two is probably um, the, the maximum that you're passing in. Sorry. So like two player, type ship, type ship, location on board, put the ship. I could actually call the ship and then call the board and see method. Or that would be like create some kind of huge method. Uh, say that again, I, I missed a bit. Uh, you could like select uh, a ship and just a location to send to the board mm -hmm. in the same method in the player class. Um, you, you, yeah, you, you, so right now, you, you're a player. Is yes. selecting a ship, so in the argument you're going to have a ship, ship. and you're going to have a coordinate. So if you're calling the ship, you're going to call the board. Um, the player, I think, should have a board. So a player's going to have a board in, in, inside them. So they're going to be instead, so they're going to have their own board. So it's implied that they're going to be placing things on their own board. You don't have to pass it in as an argument. Um, as for the ship, 
absolutely, you can pass in a ship. Um, that's, a, that's a great argument to pass in. So player, place this ship onto this position. Perfectly acceptable. Uh, don't say player, place this ship onto this board on this day at this time. It's, it's just too much going on. Um, okay, what's your question? Oh, it's a really clear example where I, I see this in arguments. Okay. You're placing a specific ship on a square and then saying, well, I'm going to go to the Okay. Um, the way I see around that is just having two methods for the player. Um, say, place one on the top, place vertical. But, potentially, yeah. Um, so maybe that is, is the case. So uh, actually, I'll probably create that method now. The um. way around that is that the ship itself is an object. Yeah, potentially. Um, maybe a ship doesn't need to know its orientation. Um, maybe it does. Uh, we can sort of get to that. Um, I'd be tempted to go for free, uh, just just in your case here. And if you're really confused, add four, add five arguments, and then extract out afterwards. So these are the general rules that you're going to apply afterward, afterwards. Um, so right now, I'm going to say can place a ship. That's a really, really good example, because uh, that's what I'm going to start writing now. So it's can place a ship. So I'm going to say, and it's going to be really hard to do doubles. Doubles aren't for the faint hearted. Um, they make you write slower, but what you get at the end is, is far greater. Um, so I'm going to say um, board dot place. So I'm going to need a ship. Um, I'm going to use some different syntax just, just for um, on on A1. Um, so I think that looks, it reads quite nicely. Board place ship on A1. So I agree. Do, so always, if you, if you generally, if I just come up to you and say, what is it you're trying to do? You'll come up with a sentence. Try and turn that sentence into a method. You're trying to place a ship on A1. Just write it out. There's, there's a way in Ruby to turn that into a method. Um, unfortunately, the code doesn't look too great on the other side if you're doing this. So if I do this, what do I expect to happen? Expect. Hmm? Yeah. So board dot um, grid. This is a hash, so I can just do a one. In fact, I'm probably going to turn this into a hash as well, or into a symbol. At some point, changing type just for the fun. Expect board dot grid a one. Um, probably going to have to call content on this. There's going to be some sort of um, dot content to equal. Yeah, it's kind of what we want. Um, I don't think we're going to get it using doubles because it's not the way it works. But um, that is in short what we want. So before I do this, before I run the test. Um, very well, I'm using test to help me write code. So I'm going to do ship. What's my ship going to be? It's going to be uh, double. Not for ship. Um, so what's the first error message I'm going to get? Undefined method. Place. Um, I'm going to get rid of this bit. So. so yeah, yeah. And check. <coughs> Two arguments. What's the first one? Shit. Next one. This will get. How, how do we translate what this probably got written here? Position. Position. And place ship um, on. Isn't it? Um, uh, double cell received unexpected message content. So now, this particular cell um, cell class. Now uh, so I'm a little bit confused. This needs to return cell, which is here. I call content on that. Am I still? What's the button? Okay, so it's supposed to be um, my ship. 
but it's not, it's water. Um, that's because the content of all of my doubles are um, A1. For this, I'll actually make a slightly different setup. I'm actually going to change the content of my, um, my cell. So I want my A1 cell to be a little bit different. Because right now, um, if I put out my grid again, oops, um, board .grid, Now you'll, you'll see that they are all the same object. Even though we're calling dot new on them, it's, it's still the same double that's being returned every single time. I'm going to want my first one just to be slightly different. Um, so I'm, I'm going to create a double now of first cell. But I'm going to do it inside my test. Uh, first cell equals double. Um, it's still double of cell. And this is where I know Ben's going to be uh, a little bit angry. Because right now I can actually, from the game here, I can actually go in and change my grid because it's still just a hash, the same as an array, it's just an array. Even though it's a reader, um, I can still cha um, change things. So I might want to fix this later on. Uh, but right now I've got the ability to do it, so I want to go ahead and do it. So I've got my board, dot grid, um, I'm going to change A1 um, equal to first cell. And if I actually I'm going to put out board.grid for us. Okay, put out board. So, grid. Uh, notice all of these, every other one here, 68, 68, 68. The first one is actually 50, um, 50, uh, sorry, 5EO. So it's a different, 5E0. So it's a different one to, to all of them. So I've kind of just changed the first one here. So this might be where you're getting a little bit stuck. So we do want our board grid a one dot content to equal shit. We do want it to equal um, grid, but actually what we want to do is we say we expect um, board dot grid a one um, to receive. Um, I sort of receive right? Nope. Um, to receive. What's it going to receive? Place. I like, I like place as a method. Uh, we could do something like equals. Um, um, how do you create equals as a... Uh, that's the string. I'll try that. Um, my grid, my board grid to receive equals with ship when I try to place a ship on it. So I'll change it around. I'm going to get rid of my puts now. Um, so expected one time, didn't happen any times at all. So now I can just do grid. Um, grid, grid what? Coordinate. Cause. This is where I said my syntax is going to come back and bite me. Um, so I'm going to run this and it's still going to fail. Um, undefined local variable method coordinate. Um, it doesn't know what its coordinate is. That's because it's a key value pair. So this is a hash here, key value. So to get the value of what coordinate is, I actually have to use the key. So this makes your code a little bit unreadable. I like the name of the method, place ship on coordinate, but the code is going to be a little bit ugly. Coordinates on. Very easy. I'm trying to watch this lecture while sorting this stuff with you, but it's all good. Oh, sorry, that's definitely on. That's the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Expected one time, not happening any time. Right. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of debugging. Yeah. Is that all right? Uh, no, it'll be a variable. Uh, puts on. So we should, in A1, right. it is a symbol. Oh, oh, oh. I 
perfect as a symbol, and I'm doing equal shit. So this this code would be working. I think it is just my um, the, the fact that I'm doing equals. Um, so th this so grid dot on. So if I just do puts grid on, what details? So it's going to happen roundabout top here. You're going to see it. So if I do it again, it's a double yeah, cell. It's a double cell. So it's 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 what's in um, there. Well, actually, I want the. I think yeah, the problem is actually. I think um, I want the content. Yeah, Dan, Joseph, the equal shit. We're on the uh, first. I expect on the main one. Bit A1 to receive content equals. Yeah, mate, that would be awesome. Bit ship. Everything's happy. No problem, that's fine by me. Um, so rather than just equals. All right, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. What you then? Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm placing a ship into to one coordinate, um, and that's probably going to work. Um, is everyone okay with what I've done there? I'm still using doubles, and I'm still placing something on a board, and it's not there. It's just I'm just making sure that I'm setting the content of that of a one equal to the ship. So, providing I can set things correctly, which I've tested in here, I can I can set content of things correctly. Then that should be placed, and everyone should be happy. I'm quite confident of that. Sorry? I've created content here. So content inside my class is, a, is an attribute accessor that I can set. And inside my board, they are just doubles, uh, but they all have a content that we can read. I don't have to say I want the content to equal ship. What I'm ensuring is that I'm setting the content correctly, and I've tested inside my cell that that works. Um, that's fine. But what if the ship had a size of two? See, it's got a size of two now. Uh, what I'd really want to do is expect that A2 receives that as well. So you can place a ship. Um, you want to say it can place a um, two cell. Should we say horizontally or vertically? Which one do we want? It's easier. Horizontally is um, A2, so the next one I'll do it on. Vertically will be B1. Yeah, we Okay, but so, so horizontally, I'm going to do this again. Um, I'm going to expect um, to equal to receive this content with ship. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so I'm testing A1 is getting the content here. So here, you can place a ship. So I've, I've got my first cell. I might want to actually make my second cell here. Second cell. A2 equals second cell. Uh, yes, exactly. So I, I could be hitting J10 and it will still be like, yeah, sure, I got the content. Um, it, yeah, so I probably will break this, this test here, so I might want to have um, something else. We'll see how far we get. We'll see, we'll see what errors I get. So expect board.grid A2 um, to receive content with ship as well as it's going to have content equals and it's going to say double cell received unexpected content equals method. Um, I imagine it's going to happen on A1. But board.place, and I'm still going to place on A1. But I expect A2 to be populated. Is everyone okay with me doing that? It's getting a bit messy, but later on I'm going to start extracting these out into um, slightly cleaner looking methods. So let's just run this. Uh, so I'm starting to hurt my head. Thinking about doubles. So I received unexpected measures content. Um, and that was correct. And which test was that for? Um, it was for my, my last test. 
I've got puts somewhere. Can anyone see any puts that I've created? Yeah. So it's for my last test. Um, sell, received, unexpected, um, unexpected message content equals. Um, so that's probably the A1 cell. So now. Um, oh, so that's failing for the correct reason. We expected A2 to receive this, but we didn't get that. Um, so do we want to start actually change our method slightly? Board, place ship on A1. Shall we do sort of facing horizontally? Shall we do horizontally? Now we've got our three items, which we might change later on. That's also complete to horizontal. Um, that's back. Um, You have to, yeah, so I could do um, and horizontally and an unknown keyword facing. Um, okay, so how do people feel about, I've got it working, but how do people feel about this clever syntax that I thought was so clever a few minutes ago? Is it confusing people? Is it working with it or is it confusing? Um, so I could just do face ship on coordinate and orientation, just give it three basic arguments. I'm losing the nice sentence, but right now it's going to give me um, slightly more readable code inside the methods rather than having the the readable name, I'm going to have readable code inside here. So I'm probably going to revert back to the old way, just because I don't really like where this sentence is going. It's, it's taking me down a route that I don't particularly like. So place ship, um, P1. Here I can say place ship, P1. It's going to be the same. Um, error message. This one's got wrong number of arguments. So what I would actually do, I'd probably hard code this to oh, I'd give this a default value off horizontally. I don't specify which direction. It's always going to be horizontal. So I don't have to pass in the argument. Um, that's working again. So now I can actually go in to, to write the correct code for this. Um, so how do I how do I write the correct code for this? I've got a ship of size two, and I want it to um, horizontally place the ship. So basically, I want to put it on also on A1 or A2. Ship dot size. Oh, is that what you mean? So it's going to go two times. Yeah. I'll do. So I'm going to place the ship where I want it to be placed. So I'm going to say grid dot grid coordinate um, equals I've got content. The ship. So that's going to place it on the first one twice. Increment the coordinate. How do I do that? Um, 
Okay. Um, <coughs> scribe. Do you want to scribe what I do now? No, I was asking if this actually has like a next key. It does, yeah. So if we go to IRB, A1, I call dot next on there. So give me A2. Um, if I wanted to, I could do dot 2s, dot reverse, dot uh, next, dot reverse, dot 2s, so give me b1. <laughs> uh, if I really like changing my methods, I could do that. Um, so I'm not too worried about that for later on. I'm, I'm sure I can find the next method. Uh, or I can split it up and just do this in the first one. Um, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not good that I'm chaining so much. So I might want to extract that out into a nice readable method, which is doing that. But, you know, there's, there's ways around. Oh, that's um, so the next stream doesn't actually add the keys and the keys and the yeah. Oh yes, yeah. So I could just have um, next. I'm going to change the last character to, to G. Um, so we, we can definitely use next. I like, I like next. I think that's great. Uh, so we're going to be using next. But what we want to do is we want the first time around. It's going to be doing what it's going to do. Second time around, it needs to do it on uh, the next one. How do we do that? Has anyone got any ideas? It's not that easy. We were doing an area that's a little different, but we're just doing that with the X, where we just go like, three times. For every time we would go through new sequence, then we would do x equals plus one mm -hmm. until x, um, like while x inferior to the limit. Right, test is the answer. So <laughs> you're trying to do something complicated now. It, it seems quite hard. So you just say um, it should be able to get all the coordinates for a uh, side and direction. I'm just going to write a standalone method now. It doesn't have anything to do with battleships. This will probably fall into the realms of a private method later on. Um, so this method is going to say um, expect um, board dot get boards. That's it's going to have an initial starting value a one. How many are we going to do? Two. And we could pass in the horizontally if, if we wanted to. Right now, it's probably not necessary. But all I care about is A1. I want two things um, horizontally. And I'll pass it in for now because I know I'm going to need it later on. And this is going to return to, it's going to give me back A1 and A2. Equally, if that was free, the A1. Um, and be free. Okay? So I'm going to put this test on hold. I don't have to file this test. I don't even have to look at it anymore. <coughs> put it on hold. Or close my entire terminal. Um, Don't one second. Which one's failing now? Get coordinate. Oh, because I've changed this. So this is no longer working for this test. So I can probably put both of them on hold while, while I figure out, get my shit together. Um, I want to get the coordinates. I want to pass this test. So we haven't got this method get coordinates. Def. Get coordinates. Is that right? Yeah. 
a wrong number of arguments, so it needs start. Um, times, size, good. Um, direction. Um, right now, I'll probably be thinking to myself, do I want to call it direction or orientation? Um, so I'll, I would change that myself. But you know, in on this side, I think I wrote direction uh, for a certain direction. So I'm getting a little bit. Um, ambiguous with, with my descriptions, so I'll probably settle on one just to make that the choice. But right now, I'll go along with it. So yeah, so I've got my start. Um, so I probably want to put an array of my start. So this is my um, an array. I'll show you a pattern to get rid of this. We can probably use map for it later on. But I've got my return array, and it's got my my start. So now, um, which is a one. So I'll do size times do um, <coughs> size times um, array an array dot last. So first time around, last is going to be the first one. At last, um, and I'll probably shovel in the array. Next. That makes sense. It may not work. So I'll run the test and then I'll ask if it makes sense. That's <laughs> the answer to that. Um, oh, because I need to return the, the return array. So size minus one. Um, that seems to be working. Um, I'll leave it like that for now. But I'm creating an array. I'm shoveling back into that array uh, the last one, or the next of the last one. Um, I'll put this code up for you to have a look at later on. It's probably not the best solution, but it's getting me to where I need to be right now. So now I can just do, uh, if I want to undo these broken tests, because that's working, um, see it's working. <coughs> I can say, uh, get coordinates, pass in my, I'm not, I'm not doing anything with the direction. I'll probably write another test for vertical. I did do something like I showed you earlier on. Get coordinates for my, um, my coordinates um, for my size for my um, orientation uh, so I'll pass in um, orientation so this is going to be that dot each to um, toward that's going to give me an array of A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. Yeah. I've got my grid, board, content, equals, yeah. Got two pending. Um, which one's this? This was my can place a ship. So can place a ship. First cell. That's oh, because my ship is size of two. Um, so my second cell is going to be receiving that as well. So inside here, I need to say allow cell to receive. Um, in actual fact, I probably want to keep this a one size ship. So I might just say small ship. Size one. 
this one here. Small chip. And small chip. And everything's happy. Um, so these are getting quite large now. Just where you want to start thinking about your refactoring. Um, I'm not 100% happy with the size of these methods here, so I'd refactor those, but equally, I'll, I'll probably go off and refactor these, but we're near enough out of time. Uh, just, did I make that look too simple? Relationship. Is everyone okay with, in principle, what's going on? Do you want me to send this code around for you to sort of have a look at? Okay. Um, so at the start, we covered dependency injection. Um, and, and reasons to do that. At the end, I went off topic for dependency injections and just went for you know, how to proceed with battleships boards with my approach. It may not be the same as your approach, but I, I definitely use some sort of um, methods in my approach, like times to comment things out and not to comment things out, that hopefully you're taking some stuff from. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs>